Well, if you listen, there's a funny moment in Born to Run. And you'll hear the drums going. I mean, something that no, no rock player would ever play. Hey everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Once again, I'm back behind the drum kit. Every once in a while, I love making drum videos uh, because I started off on drums. And anytime I come across something that blows my mind, I feel like I have to do a deep dive and just figure things out. And then if I figure it out, I'd love to share it with all of you. So this idea came to me when I was studying how to play the bass line for Born to Run. And believe me, this is going to be my last Born to Run video in a while. I think I made like three in the last month. Anyway, I was listening to the tune and I was figuring out all the bass stuff. And there's one particular part of the song where all of a sudden the drums go absolutely insane. And it's really only a two measure, I'll call it a, a beat fill, because it can kind of be one or the other. I mentioned that section in one of my videos and I talked about Max Weinberg playing that because I thought he was the drummer for the boss, you know, in the studio at the time. Turns out I was wrong. I didn't realize it until someone made the comment in the video. And uh, he was like, man, that wasn't Max. That was actually a guy named Ernest Carter. Cut to Max Weinberg. I have never been able to play this one little lick that he played in the middle that's on the record. Tried to play it, very syncopated kind of jazz fusion part. And finally, it just never came off right, so I eliminated it, and I've never played it. That's when my obsession for this section of the song really solidified. So what I did was I found an isolated drum track, and I slowed it down to 50% to really hear what was going on. Even though it was real garbled sounding, you could hear pretty much what was going on, at least with the main uh, drums that he's hitting, the kick and snare. The hi-hat's kind of washed out, so it's kind of hard to hear parts of it, but I decided I would make it a mission, my mission, to learn how to play this fill. Even if I never play it up to speed, uh, just to figure it out from the inside out. Now, like I mentioned, the parts that I could really hear were the kick and the snare drum parts. So here's what I pulled from the slowed down version of it. I heard this. That's the way it starts off. It kind of reminded me of like the Immigrant Song by Zeppelin, except with one less kick. So I hear this now. The hi-hat's not right yet, don't worry. Okay, then after that, I, I break it into basically three sections. The second section, I heard this. So it's very much like the first one, but there's an added kick drum. There's a double on the final kick. And then on the final section, which is the longer section in my mind, I just heard the song Scentless Apprentice by Nirvana, which is really funny because when I researched for this video, I found out it was Scentless Apprentice. I always thought it was Senseless Apprentice. But I hear that when I heard the last part of this drum fill. So here's what I hear. And if you know that Nirvana song, you probably totally agree. Okay, so if you put that together with the incorrect hi-hat, you get this. We're going to go deeper now, but what I think is really funny was a lot of people in the comments section for the other video, the drum video, said that this is all bizarre for a lot of drummers because it comes from a jazz background. So Ernest Carter playing his jazz chops in Born to Run is creating this fill. But... Now that I'm playing it or I'm trying to learn it, I'm hearing more of a rock styling. You know, like I said, Zeppelin and Nirvana already when I play that. Not that Nirvana was out when this song came out, but you know, I compare it to what I know. So if you speed that up with the incorrect hi-hat, you get this. Being more of a rock drummer, it's so much more natural for me to do the immigrant song kick drum pattern instead. It would have been so much easier if it was that, but it's not. Okay, then the biggest challenge I had was trying to figure out what the hi-hat was doing. And that's when I had to basically start over. I had the kick drum and the snare drum down, kind of, pretty much. But when I added this new hi-hat, it threw everything out the window for me. So here's what I'm hearing when I slow it down. Now that's if I keep the hi-hat closed. If you open it like he does, you sound more like this. 
which adds another level of complexity to it. You ever have a pattern that you just feel really natural playing? This one is a pattern that I feel really good doing, this one. So the hi-hat's just going like this. One, then two, and then two. With the snare hitting between some of the hits, which makes it feel really natural. I could play that sticking all day and feel totally comfortable. It's funny how some drummers just naturally click with certain patterns, but if you try to do their pattern, it feels so awkward to you. And that's what happened to me when I had to start to add Ernest's kick drum into this equation. So here's what I mean. This is gonna be starting to put it all together now. That feels bizarre to me to hit that double kick. It hits right with the hi-hat, but it still feels weird to me. But I do love how that Nirvana beat at the end really locks into the hi-hat. It's a great feeling when it comes together. So I started to do that kind of slow. And I played to some other songs. I just try to keep that beat going through the whole thing. I think I used a lot of Michael Jackson songs. I tend to do that when I'm practicing beats. Anyway, then I knew I had to do two more things to get even close to what Ernest does. I have to start to open that hi-hat and I have to start to speed up to the tempo. So I believe it's 150 is close, uh, beats per minute is close to what he's doing on that. Cause the song is doing this at the time. It's got about that speed. Like that. So I thought this is going to be really challenging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to speed it up with the closed hi-hat because it just seems to feel better for me that way. Then at the end, I'll open the hi-hat and see if I can put it all together near the speed of the album. Okay, here we go. When I finally reached that speed, by the way, this has taken me about a week now to even get to that speed. I was like, I could see why Max Weinberg kind of just pushed it aside because the real details of this is pretty intense. And when you're in the middle of a song and you're going off, it's really hard to suddenly switch gears and play this crazy fill. Okay, let's keep going with this one and then I'm gonna start to add the open hi-hat. It would be so much easier if it was just that immigrant song groove. I'm just so used to that. Okay, let's keep going. So that's where I'm at after about a week's worth of practicing. I can't wait for a few more weeks when I really feel it solid and I feel like I can just throw it in without thinking too much. That's always the key for me. All right, so let me know in the comment section if you're a drummer who plays this live uh, and let me know if you actually do the real deal or if you kind of modified it to kind of fit what you're used to playing. Looking forward to reading your comments and we'll catch you at the next video. See ya, bye-bye.